When a man saves a dying tiger, he believes he will soon have to say goodbye forever. But sometime later, the tables turn in an unexpected way, and something unbelievable happens. Although it was a cold winter's morning, with temperatures well below zero degrees, Vanya was hiking through the frozen landscape of the eastern taiga. The previous night, there had been heavy snowfall, and as a forester, part of his job was to ensure that the access roads between his log cabin and the nearby villages remained safe. He encountered few other signs of life, but when he came to a segment where the snowfall had been particularly thick, he heard an unmistakable cry for help. It sounded like a child, but surely that had to be impossible? Any good parent would keep their children safely inside in this weather. He had only walked a few steps when he discovered that his target was not a human child at all, but something much, much rarer. Although only its half-frozen nose was visible, it was clear that the creature making those pitiful cries was a tiger cub. And not just any tiger cub, this was a Siberian tiger, a species that was critically endangered. Expertly minding the treacherous snow, Vanya reached the tiger cub and began digging to free it from its icy prison. It took him close to half an hour to get the cub freed, and by then he had also discovered its injured leg. Vanya used some timber and the equipment he had on him to fashion a type of raft and secured the tiger cub onto it. As the cub glided over the snow path, Vanya noticed that its eyes closed. The poor thing was exhausted, and if he failed to help it in time, it would not survive the ordeal. So, he walked as fast as his legs would take him, fighting against the urge to stop and breathe. When Vanya arrived home with his precious little cargo, he immediately lit some kindling in his fireplace and fed the cat some warm milk. Next, Vanya tended to its injury. He cleaned the wound with disinfectant, but the cub didn't like the smell at all and wiggled a little too much as Vanya secured the fracture with a splint and then bandaged it up. Once he was comfortable in his snug little nest in front of the fire, the cub finally succumbed to exhaustion and dozed off. Vanya felt a little uneasy with a tiger cub in his cabin, but he realized that he couldn't simply kick it out and let nature take its course. The cat was too small to survive on its own, and its life was too precious to waste. So, he did the only other thing he could think of. He built a makeshift cage and decided that he would keep the cub with him until it was strong enough to go back to the taiga. Under Vanya's care, the tiger cub thrived. The injured leg healed completely but the wound left a noticeable scar. Thankfully, it did not seem to hamper the animal's mobility in any way. At first, sharing his log cabin with the tiger cub was a little like living with an oversized cat, but over time, he grew to the size of a large dog, and finally, far larger than any dog. Although Vanya loved his massive friend, whom he had named Bannock, he knew that they would have to part soon. He tried to prepare his friend for his eventual transition to the wild by engaging him in hunting games. He would string up pieces of meat in a nearby tree or drag them across the forest floor in an attempt to stimulate the tiger's hunting instinct. And when he observed the tiger stalking a neighbor's goat, he realized that the time had come for their parting. And thankfully, Bannock wouldn't be alone in the wild either. On his rounds, where the tiger had always shadowed him, Vanya had recently encountered a young tigress observing them from a safe distance. She was obviously quite confused by this puzzling bond between tiger and man, but Vanya realized that this could be the perfect opportunity to return Bannock to his natural home without traumatizing him. On the day that Vanya had planned for Bannock's release, he packed lunch and prepared to spend the day hiking. Bannock seemed to enjoy padding alongside him, but then he caught the scent of the female tiger and his posture stiffened with interest. Vanya quickly withdrew. This was exactly what he had hoped would happen. All seemed to be going well, but then Bannock suddenly swung around and trotted back towards Vanya. No, no, he shouted, but Bannock kept coming. It was time to do something that would hurt them both. Vanya picked up a rock and threw it at the tiger. It grazed him and Bannock let out a confused roar. Vanya turned around and began to walk away. Hard as it was to abandon his tiger, he never looked back. He half expected the tiger to be waiting for him at the log cabin, but Bonnick was absent. 
He did not see him on any of his rounds again. He felt really terrible about that last interaction, but he found strength in the thought he'd done what was best for the tiger. In time, the guilt and pain dulled until his last encounter with the tiger turned into little more than a pang of sorrow at the back of his mind. Life went on, and Vanya thought it was going pretty well until he began to experience disturbing symptoms that suggested a serious health crisis. He lost weight because he often felt too nauseous to eat and was no longer able to spend hours walking through his beloved snowy forests due to fatigue and weakness. A depressing battery of blood tests and scans revealed that his kidneys were failing, and unless he sought treatment, he would weaken and die. But for Vanya, the prospect of leaving his life as a forester seemed almost like a death sentence itself. Although he knew that delaying treatment was perilous, he was reluctant to leave the forest, but one day, that decision would be made for him by another. As Vanya walked through the taiga that day, his mind was troubled. He thought back to happier days when he had walked unhampered with Bannock happily padding alongside him. Now, with his thoughts dark and despondent, he hoped that at least the tiger would remain wild and free long after he himself was no more. As he was deep in thought, he did not immediately think anything of the acrid, dry stench of burning that was slowly seeping in. But when the smoke that followed made his breathing a little more difficult, he could no longer ignore the fact that this was no ordinary fire. What he saw when he looked up was a fast-moving forest fire that was threatening everything in its path, including Vanya. His first concern was for all the wildlife that was at risk, and Vanya quickly sent out an alert to warn all foresters in the area of the spreading fire. He soon heard the rotor blades of helicopters and knew that his message would save many lives but that still left Vanya himself perilously close to the fire's onslaught. Although he moved quickly, he could not ignore the toll that his compromised health took on his mobility. Two years ago, it would have been easy to escape, but now his breathing was labored and his legs hurt. When he stumbled, he felt his consciousness slipping and knew at once that it was beyond his strength to get up again. Soon, the forest fire would overtake and envelop him, and he would breathe out his last. He thought of his ashes settling across the land and becoming one with it after the fire had died down. Perhaps that would be for the best. In his groggy state, he imagined that he felt something pawing his arm and then his shoulder, nudging it insistently. Surely it had to be a dream. He felt something licking his face, and then that something grabbed hold of his collar with strong teeth. Then the unbelievable happened some creature began to drag Vanya away from the heat and the smoke, towards air that was cooler, more breathable. Vanya opened his eyes to look at the animal that was saving his life and saw the pale orange fur of a Siberian tiger. As the magnificent, well-built tiger, his hero, turned to leave, Vanya saw the unmistakable scar that still marked his leg as a permanent reminder of that injury that had almost claimed his life as a cub. At this crucial moment, Bannock the Tiger came back for Vanya to remind him that life was always precious. When he finally managed to get up, Vanya realized that he was almost home. His friends still remembered their time spent together and had risked his life to save him. Tears gathered in his eyes as he watched Bannock leave. No, it wasn't time for him to die. He needed to get treatment for his illness now and go back to his beloved forest as a stronger man. He owed it to himself, but he also owed it to Bannock. What a beautiful ending. If you have a similar story about an animal hero, tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear it. For now though, we're out of here. We'll see you in the next video.